Hello, this is video number six in my time value of money series. And here I'm going to show the calculation of present value. And as you recall, the future value of an investment is defined as the compounded value of the cash flows. And if that cash flow is provided today, then um, that value today is called present value. So if you solve for this present value, you come up with this very important valuation formula in all of finance because it provides us with the basis for determining the value of uh, any set of cash flows that we expect going forward. Okay, so now in this first example, we're expecting 500 bucks one year from today, and we wish to determine what the value is today, given um, a rate of return of 8%. So using the present value formula and doing this manually, substituting and solving, we find that to be $462.96. Meaning, well, if you're presented with the option of receiving $492, uh, $462.96 today or 500 bucks a year from today, you should be indifferent. In so far as your rate of return is 8%, the two amounts, although different, have the same value. In finance, the goal of the firm of any investment is to maximize value, not to maximize profit. In valuation, we recognize that there are timing issues and also there are risk issues embedded in the required rate of return. All right, it's a quick concept. Using the calculator to hook this up. First, we clear the screen. And here, notice we just we have a future value. Anytime the input involves either future value or present value or an annuity payment, you know you're going to stay uh, in this uh, on this set on this third row of keys because this is where you have payment, uh, sorry, present value, payment, and future value. So anyhow, second clear TVM, second clear work, and put in the values. Five hundred is your future value. One is your n and 8 is your required rate of return. You compute. What are we computing? PV. There you go. To remove this negative, just hit the plus minus key here and that's your result. Moving forward to example number two. Here now, your time period is 20 years. No worries. Just plug in 20 here and solve. Or instead of um, 1, you type in um, 20 to solve for uh, the present value. The third um, situation here is one where we're expecting variable cash flows um, over the next uh, four uh, periods, over the next four years, and we wish to determine the present value today. So using this present value formula, all we got to do is discount each of these separately and then add them all up, which is actually what I've shown here by definition, by substitution, and results. And we can accomplish this quite so simply using the uh, financial calculator. So here, notice that the cash flows are different from year to year. So that tells us we're going to have to use the cash flow register, this guy right here. And that means we're going to stay on this second row of keys. So first, we clear the screen. Second, clear TVM. Second, clear work. A ritual you're going to have to perform prior to the use of this system to perform any new task. So now, clear CF, and after you clear, after you click on CF, hit second, clear work. That uh, clears out any previous um, analysis you did in this mode. So now, if you observe, we do not have any cash flow at time zero. So just ignore this and hit arrow down. For C1 re refers to cash flow at the end of the first period, so that's 500. Enter. Scroll to C2. C2 is 600. Enter. C3 is 800. Enter. And finally, C4 is 900. Enter. And you're done. If you keep scrolling down without making further entries, you're going to review all your entries from C1 to C2, C3, and you can stop at any point. So all you got to do is hit this NPV, net present value key here. It prompts you for the required rate of return. And in this example, if I may move this aside, it's 8%. So type 8 and enter. You got to enter every input within this uh, register. All right, scroll down, and now it tells you compute. So click CPT for compute, and that's your result 2273.96 approximately.
So now, even better yet, let's go ahead and use spreadsheets. So here, for the single cash, this is our input for this single cash flow of 500 bucks a year from today. So this is your cheat sheet right there. Equal PV. You can type lowercase, uppercase. It doesn't matter. For rate, I click on this comma. It tells you number of periods which is in. Click on this comma. Payments. We do not have payments. Payments would be annuity payments. So just type zero and comma. Um, future value, we do have that. So click on this. And if you want your result to be positive, so hit negative and then click on this because this is an equation. Something is going to have to change sign when it crosses the other side. All right, and that's your result right there. And if your number of periods is 20, type 20 right there and it cal correctly calculates it. So the second problem uh, deals with uh, variable cash flows. All right, and here this is our input right there. And because we have variable cash flows, we're gonna we're not gonna use the simple PV function as up there. We're gonna use the NPV function as I write out here. So equal NPV open parenthesis. It asks you for the rates. Click on this comma and asks you for the cash flows which are values but notice it says values from time period one to the last all right from time period one to the last so if you had anything at time zero you would have ignored it so start from here and work your way down and that's it and you hit enter and that's your result in the case where you have an initial cash flow as I show here suppose and you wish to calculate NPV no worries it's the same practice NPV open parenthesis click on the rate comma again you gotta start from uh, cash flow at time period one click hold go down and thing is remember the initial cash flow um, occurs at the point where value is being determined and so you're not gonna have to d discount this cash flow at all so you simply add it in plus you click on this and that's all she wrote